let's freaking go. We were let's talking go. gears. You were emotional. We knew we were getting gear something. Yeah. I don't think any of us could have guessed it was going to be a return to E Day. I don't, I could not have guessed it at a hundred guesses. Dude, this is what I think the community has been asking for. It is a return to what made the Xbox 360 great. It is a return to one of the pillars that hold up the Xbox brand platform, whatever you want to say. Gears is back. We're going to see, because again, if you want to read the books, they're there. Go to Amazon. You can buy them. But we're going to be playing this, and I and I really think it's safe to assume that it is going to be a launch title for the next uh, a console simply because the 20th anniversary happens in 2026. Let's get your take on this biggest announcement of the show. Gears of War E-Day, baby. Yeah, Gears of War Emergence Day. We're taking it back to the origins of basically what is the catalyst of the entire Gears of War universe. You know, this, this singular global event basically kicks off the entirety of the Gears of War story narrative in every direction. And uh, yeah, I couldn't believe it, man. Like I said, I, I was fully, you know, we, we have all the rumors, we had all the leaks, we had, you know, Tom Warren out there just, you know, like reporting like six different times, like yo, I'm, I'm expecting Microsoft to announce a new Gears of War game. So yeah, I was going into the event like, you know, there's going to be a Gears of War game announcement here. And as the show obviously went on, my my thought was they were either going to obviously open the show with it or close with the show. So obviously when we got those fro- the, the, those first three games, um, Doom and the other two, uh, Call of Duty, Black Ops 6, Doom, and then uh, was it Perfect Dark or what was the third game? Was I it- think it was start, but I think Perfect Dark was the third game, if, yeah. I, if, I don't, if I'm um, not mistaken. So yeah, yeah. When, when we didn't get Gears of War there, I was like, okay, it has to be at the end. And obviously as time was going on, like my, my stream chat was kind of losing hope and I was saying, nah, like, like, like believe, you got to believe, you got to believe, like this has to be the year. <laughs> it's just been, this has been too much, you know, we, we, we've been through it for too long, man. We've gone every Xbox showcase sitting there like, World premiere. Okay, this might your Xbox Game Studios. But right, this might. Oh, nah, it's not, all right. And we've gone through that, right? And yeah, I was just, I, I just fully knew and expected, and was fully prepared for the Gears of War announcement. But yeah, not, not fully prepared for the Gears of War announcement that we did get. Yeah, because obviously everybody was speculating, and you know there was rumors of obviously easy to say like, hey, you know they're just going to drop the next sequel with Gear Six, and uh, there, there would be the Gears of War collection. And now, honestly, I don't even know what to think. All we know is that we got a Gears of War E Day game confirmed, and. Uh, yeah, we're taking it back to the origins, man. Emergence Day, the Locust War, you know, the Locusts are back. And uh, we've got Marcus and Dom, and th- th- there's so much potential here. And, um, you know, it feels like they've really taken a step back and been like, okay, like, wh- what is Gears of War? Like, what what is this franchise? What is this IP? Like, what is the brand? Like, what is the strong points that, you know, Gears of War fans have, have, have been wanting to see the return for a very, very long time? And it's so much, right? It's obviously... Take it back to the Locust War. Go back to, you know, seeing Marcus and Dom as, as, as main characters and, you know, old school. We actually won't get Delta Squad in this game uh, because, you know, unless they really want to, you know, break the story lore. But one of the best things about Gears of War is the universe and the, the story lore and the narrative. They stick to that like it's Bible, you know, like the Gears of War lore is everything. And so, uh, you know, we won't actually get to see like Marcus and Dom and Bed and Cole team up in E-Day because they don't actually meet for 14 years. Like the events of Gears 1 when those characters are, you know, meeting in the game, like that is actually when those characters meet. So that it's that there's no way they can have those characters obviously interact in this game. It doesn't necessarily mean that obviously, you know, Bed and Cole can't be a part of it because, you know, it's Emergence Day, right? Everyone and everything is affected by E-Day. Um and yeah, I'm just I'm just so excited, man. Like, honestly, bro, I literally I just can't believe. It. I think this is the best case scenario that that Gears of War could have done. Like, yeah, I would obviously love to see the the Gears of War story continue after Gears Five. You know, I put out so many uh, Gears Six story theories. You know, I'll quickly drop my my main one right right here, real quick. The idea concept based on a speech Marcus Phoenix had in Gears Five. He said, uh, "Now that the Swarm have their new leading queen, that means that they must have a special hive somewhere, a nexus." where they're most vulnerable and that's where we've got to target and take out right and uh you know marcus's theory was that kate's nightmare visions in gears 5 was actually teasing what that main swarm hive was and my theory was that the ending of gears of war 3 the countermeasure when it was activated not only crystallized the locusts and then evolved them into the swarm and the science 
but the uh, countermeasure also crystallized one of the other dormant rift worms, the creator rift worm that is able to create life on Sarah. And my theory was that the ending of Gears 3 was actually what caused the origin of the swarm. And I reckon the, the main swarm hive could possibly be like a crystallized rift worm that we'd obviously have to take out, right? But obviously, we're not going to get that story for, you know, anytime near soon. But I do believe still, I, I believe in my theory and I feel like that could be, you know, the potential story narrative for a Gear 6. But uh, yeah, Gears of War E Day, man. I just, I just, I was absolutely shocked. You know, my reactions out there. I was, uh, I was just, I was just, I was just hyped to see Gears of War. Obviously, as soon as we got to oh, the yeah. TV screen, saw the the, the coalition all the government, you know, blue cog symbol, and you know, everybody <laughs> lost their mind. Uh, obviously, there was a newspaper before that says uh, UIR surrender, the end of the war, or the war is over, which is related to the Pendulum Wars, which obviously takes yep. place before that game and it ended six weeks ago. Uh, but yeah, I feel like, because I watched a lot of, obviously, a lot of reaction videos as well. And it feels like when everybody saw that cog symbol on the TV, that was really, the, you know, the thing to be like, yo, this is Gears of War. But uh, yeah, I can't wait to jump into it, man. I'll let everybody else talk and then, you know, we can get back to me because I've got so much to talk about. Because uh, I, I, I could say, honestly, I'll just drop this now and then, you know, we can get back to it. But I could say that the Coalition could actually maybe launch Gears of War E-Day as a Gears of War gaming platform to serve as a sort of like uh, similar to how Call of Duty has it, where they have like all of their different Call of Duty experiences running through Call of Duty HQ. Yep. Gears of War E-Day could be a gaming platform for the Gears of War IP to launch Emergence Day E-Day stories only in that game. So, you know, you could go on to Gears of War E-Day and you have the main campaign, then you have this expansion, this expansion, this expansion, because that singular event is, is such a catalyst across all character story for both the goodies and the baddies you know every single cog gear every single uir every single stranded civilian uh even the you know generals of the locust horde with ram and scourge like every character has a story to tell and so you know what if they turn obviously that e-day into a platform that could serve obviously you know looking at what they did with high buses right and the uh the gears 5 campaign dlc expansion there they could easily yep. do that for every type of you know character or different squads in the game whether you get uh, you know, the bed and cold story from Hanover, where they're actually at the Cougars Frashable Stadium. Uh, we obviously have the Battle of Jam uh, Janamon, which is the first Cog City that gets attacked on Emergence Day by Scourge and General Ram. And, you know, there's, there's so much potential in, in, in the storyline of Gears that really, like, Gears of War E-Day could launch, like, a whole new uh, platform for Gears of War. And also, just before we get to the next person, I say that because if you do obviously go over to the Xbox Wire, uh, news posts that they made regarding the future of Gears. There's a few comments in there from the Coalition, which sort of gave me the, this idea because they do say that uh, it's also important to know that Emergence Day is not a spin-off. It is a completely new entry in the mainline series. just set early in the timeline. Uh, the events of this game not only serve as an exciting origin tale of two beloved characters, but it also adds detail and context to this period. So like Gears of War E-Day as a game is going to serve with great context in detail that will resonate through stories that will follow. So the yep. Coalition are already talking about how Gears of War E-Day as a game is going to set off possibly what will maybe be, obviously, future uh, stories with, again, still young, you know, Marcus and Dom throughout the Locust War itself. Uh, and they say, uh, uh, where is it right here? Everything that happens in E-Day will shape the future of Gears of War for the better. And so, obviously, what does that statement mean, right? Everything that happens in Gears of War Emergence Day as a game will shape the future of Gears of War for the better. Because, obviously, like, we know how the Locust War ends in the original Gears trilogy. So, like, yep. in terms of story narrative, the Gears of War E-Day game can't obviously change the events of what happened in those games. So it must be not, you know, something related to the story, but it must be uh, on a, a much larger grand scheme of things, right? In the sense of everything that happens in Gears of War Emergence is going to shape the future of, you know, Gears of War as a franchise, but also future games in the in the future as well. So, I mean, so listen, do, bro. Real quick, real quick, do anything I, when, when I hear that. And see, I, when I read it, <clears throat> what I all I all that made me think of was they're starting with E-Day because, again, you know, as much as, you know, we know that context, right? Got to yeah. remember, there's a whole new generation of people who Gears of War is is just another game that came out in 20, you know, whatever, right? The last Gears of War 5, right? So we, when you go to Gears 5, right, the reason they're not going to Gear 6 now, in, in my head, is that there's no foundation for Gears lovers that are new, 
right? Yeah. Like you're, it's all just old gears heads that are are talking about this. But unfortunately, you guys are very limited, right? Like you you guys are not the mainstream, and I'm not talking about you guys in particular. I'm talking about gears heads, right? There's just not that many anymore, right? Yeah, like, we're falling off, man. Like there's a lot of yeah, people. Like, so I played with you know back in the day clan members that have you know grown up, moved on, got kids, got family, and exactly, you know, exactly. Yeah, no, and there's no nothing here, to bring but... those. There's nothing to bring that new that new new in right the new people who are interested in gears right so when i took it this way you know i i said emergence day they want to start right from the beginning right introduce us to just marcus and dom like you said the other people are not even a part of that story yet right so they're kind of giving us that really that's what everybody loved that real story between the two right everybody fell in love with the two of them so they're giving us that and then you know we've had the rumors about the gears trilogy right being a remake Right. So when I when I saw that and, you know, my wife, Doodle, she she was the one who kind of brought it up to me and it just made sense was the fact that you got the E-Day that comes out. Then you drop your trilogy. Now that yeah. we say trilogy, maybe it's not all one trilogy. Maybe it's maybe it's just the first game. Maybe they're breaking it up. Who, who knows the way they're going to do it? But you got the trilogy redone in Unreal Engine 5 and it's a remake, not just a remaster. So they fixed the, not change the lore, but do it in a way where it's going to be able to help introduce new people to the story and then you lead into gear six that's because probably you don't what's going to happen yeah. that, that's the way i see it just because gear six is too daunting they know that gears five you know it, it did great but it's not bringing in new people like that right whereas mm -hmm. you know if you just come out with a gear six it's just going to be another game that people are going to be like oh man i don't even I don't even know what Gears 1, 2, like Gear 6. What the hell happened to Gears 4? Yeah, yeah, you know like, what I'm saying? Like, they're obviously using Gears of War E Day is like, I actually really look at it as sort of like a spiritual sort of reboot of Gears of War. Uh, yep, I agree. Yeah, and obviously, yeah. you know, Same. taking it back to like like the, the pure, like the purest forms of the foundation of what makes Gears of War great. And obviously, you know, Emergence Day is, is the best way to do that. And I would say that if Emergence Day is really successful, I could actually like even see like the coalition again splintering into multiple Gears of War teams and having you know one team dedicated to telling stories with these you know the younger the younger Marcus and Darman because it's set on Emergence Day and Gears One is in fourteen years like it's still like we have so much negative space in the Locust War like if you look at the entirety of the Locust War it's seventeen years the original trilogy takes place in only the last three years. We know that in the 10, uh, 10, 10 years after E-Day is the Battle of Ephira, which is the battle that gets Marcus sent to the Slab Prison. Uh, we know that the Hammer Strikes take place two years after Emergence Day, which is when the Cog were like, hey, if you don't make it to the Jacinto Plateau, your sacrifice will be remembered and we're going to literally just absolutely just burn the world with the Hammer of Dawn. You know, if you're outside of Jacinto Plateau, you're basically, you, you're cooked, you're gone. See you later. Yeah. We, we appreciate your sacrifice, you know? Um, <laughs> and obviously, like... <laughs> In terms of story narrative, there's so much negative space there that they could they could do like one game per year, and that would be 14 Gears of War games from E Day to Gears One. You know, there's so much story that that, that still needs to be told, uh, that... and that's you know that's what the coalition's passionate about, man. They they did a interview with IGN like four years ago uh, when they you know teased the choice, and they also said that like. The coalition team isn't obviously locked in to be like, right, they have to do gear six and then they have to go do gear seven. Like they have to continue it, you know, the, 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 the present story. They look at Gears of War as like, we have like 200 years right here from the Pendulum Wars to the, you know, current present timeline day that we have like all of these different eras, whether it's the Pendulum Wars, the Locust War, the Lambent Pandemic, the Stranded Insurgency. Like we have all of these narratives that exist in our like timeline already that we want to go jump back in the past. We want to go jump, you know, to the other factions. We want to go tell all these different stories just to make up the, there's, there's, there's so much negative space that, that still exists in Gears of War, even though it's already been, you know, around for 20 years. It's the thing about Gears of War, man. The negative space in this franchise is basically anything that's never been explained until it is explained. And really, they can't stop doing Gears of War until they've explained everything, you know? That's the yeah. black no, box I variable. But the, the, the basis of what you're talking about is the change that's inside Microsoft structure, Xbox structure. Xbox structure has gone from a console constructed box into an open format, open free falling format, uh, the platform, yeah. which is Game Pass. Game Pass is supposed to be uh, this Hydra that is extended through everywhere, through every screen. 
that's the whole uh, premise of it, right? So when you did that, that you looked at the pillars, those three pillars, those three pillars that we talked about, Halo Infinite was the first uh, to launch the salvo into that structure, right? And what the idea was with Halo was it was supposed to be this open world thing that you was able to Lego build on and send down episodic uh, stories, if you will, to continue on the platform. It wasn't well received in the beginning, and I don't know what they do with that. And I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to continue in that same space because they did the same exact thing for Forza. Started from the ground up so that it's in a space where that it can be legoed on and continue in continuum inside the space, the platform, right? Gears. Now that you touched on that aspect of it, and you have all these little branching connecting parts with Emergence Day, there's so many stories that can be told out of that same funnel that this lends properly. This probably can be the only franchise that can successfully, successfully launch inside Game Pass and start that episodic structure that they're looking for to continue keeping different teams working in that Call of Duty type of, uh, you know, um, uh, piston like that machine that 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 thing that keeps millions of subscribers locked in year to year into your service along with call of duty dudes let's say the call of duty dude wants to take a break and he can slide over to some forza or slide over to some gears or go into some halo and those pillars start to stand on their own and they start to infest every screen across the world I honestly believe that that's the plan. I didn't think when when I, when I got a lot of the paperwork, when I got a lot of the information, they kept saying the Marcus the Marcus Phoenix um, remaster collection. Re collection. They kept saying that, and then when I seen him, I'm like, okay, right? But I, and I'm like, shit, he looks young. <laughs> like I'm like, okay, this is bad CGI. This is that's what I said. I said if 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 he's fitting to die here, I'm like, what what is this? What's what's going on here, right? Because I was so off base with what was going on, and then I said, aha. If they go back here, they can always get to Gear Six, launch yep. the game. There's no there's no on. there's no rush for it. There's absolutely, absolutely zero rush. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, still develop that pipeline where you're giving the fan base, the core fan base, the stories that you want to tell. There's Halo books that they want to tell. There's stories that they want to tell because the show is doing so well, but they don't mm -hmm. have a companion piece to this. Fallout 76 is the reason why we have Fallout 76 on the show is the companion piece for the Fallout show because they don't have a companion piece fallout proper to go with it so they're as, uh, attaching it to fallout 76 you might be right because the netflix halo i mean um uh gears of war can coincide with all of this and yep. they're hitting it from a multimedia aspect what what is it tri media uh, That's what it's um, called. the uh transmedia transmedia yeah the transmedia aspect of it it grows within leaps and bounds. Yeah, and then you can do a Sony and say, "Hey, let's Lego this crap as well." Um, <laughs> oh boy, I'm just saying listen, they need to make a Lego Halo. All right, uh, uh, we, listen, we, we, they, we I got the real Lego, Lego Halos. I don't need to. Get it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel it. I need it. I need it. I, listen, no, I, I think I, you're right too I, with the Netflix show. I think they're going to show the they're going to show E Day right. And, yeah, and well, it's going to be a film. The, 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 film the film is is in current uh, pre production right now, and they are working on an anime. So yeah, those, yeah. those two things yeah. are so on one of the them way. is going to show it. So yeah. if you launch one of them and then launch the game, you know what I'm saying? See E Day, play E Day. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, day. yeah. No, yeah, I'm, you, I'm a campaign dude. I am not the multiplayer dude. I'm not even sitting here holding. <laughs> it. It's not. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't care. You're about. ready for that back end, nah. Nah, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> listen. I'm, I'm a Fortnite dude. I like the free flow. I like the jumping cars. I like the jump. Uh, sky dive. That's like me. I'm a Halo guy. I'm never ball. gonna get. I'm. I'm never yeah. gonna roll with gears. It's, it's fine. But listen, you know, I, we got to bring in Crispy Bomb because Crispy hearing shadows break this down made He's a good. light bulb go He's off good. in my I head. I like him. He's good. Okay. <laughs> you see, we are just assuming Crispy 
that E Day is going to be its game. It's a prequel. It is going to set up. We know it's not going to change anything. And shout out to Paris Lily who's in the chat. So uh, great to meet you in person, brother. It was awesome to hang out with you, That's Danny. Right, and and uh, so many so many people that I met for the first time it was amazing. Um, what if Crispy Bomb? This is a new trilogy because Shadows broke it down where when we first are introduced to Marcus, it's 10 years past E-Day. 14, 14. 14 years past E-Day when we first find Marcus. So maybe this is a new trilogy. You know, I, I, I can actually see where we get from E-Day to where we first meet Marcus, there's a lot. There's a lot of time from then. Um, let's talk about it, brother. L let's get your 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 personal reactions of this because we knew something gears was happening. I don't think any of us knew this was happening. I, I mean, this is exactly what I wanted. It was, uh, you know, when when I saw E Day, I said gears freaking lives because, like, I I just I felt like if they went right to six. It just wouldn't do it justice. It, it wouldn't. It, and, you know, your idea, Shadows, I, I I don't necessarily had the same exact thought, but I was like, you know, they've done a lot of great DLCs over the lifetime of the Gears of War, the whole franchise. Like, you know, you had, you had like, Ram Shadow. You had, like, the Aftermath. You had, you know, like, all these different DLCs. Do you remember and, the Road and, to as well in Gears 2 when you dressed up as Farron Guys and you had to sneak into the Nexus? Yeah, actually, I don't remember that one. Ooh. I was, yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, like, because I, I played Gears so long in my life, I have, that's why, dude, sub, sub to Shadows, if you want lore, I'm telling you, this man is is a Gears book. His head is, <laughs> is that impressive? I've watched so many videos of yours impressive. and learned something new about Gears. Um, At the end of the day, I, I played the game. You know what I mean? Like, you have went full on in-depth um, you know, I always knew there was that gap and I always said, what are we going to do about this? You know what I mean? I know there's like little fillers, but so I, I watched Cliffy B's, you know, interview and he's like, yeah, we really, you know, at the end of the day, like even the pendulum wars, I just threw it in there. And, and he's like, he'd reference some book or something that he read. And he's like, at the end of the day, if you throw these reference points and you can always find a way to go back to them or find a way to bring them in the lore. And that was like, I was like, aha. And he like he loved it. So, you know, he was like, I was like, so they, you know, we're going back. We really are going back to the the logic of of what it was. And and really it started out like a, a piecemeal, you know, and realism of of what what was an idea and became like this whole like it's a book series, it's a comic series gaming we're going to a movie now and an and, uh, anime like they could really do that and the the only question i is is i have is how do you because you know at the end of the day like me and shadows like yeah we're gonna go and beat the campaign but then we're gonna be back in the multiplayer how are they gonna are they gonna move that along kind of like you know not necessarily like any gameplay loop or not like that the, the normal gears gameplay loop but maybe having um more of like a, a war zone type like hey like every two years you get this new new episode but it's not it's like a dlc you know what i mean they brings you mm -hmm. back into the, the 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 lands then they give you a whole new map set and all this other stuff like there's a lot there that could really because ue5 is really in its empty so what are you we're talking this thing could be going on for another 10 years you know what i mean easily so you could yeah. have a game every two years that, you know, really piecemeals, you know, eight to 10 hour campaign, new multiplayer stuff, really make sure that you launch it correctly. Cause y'all know my, my feeling about that tour of duty system. I'm going to tell you right now, when they <laughs> launched like that, I was so ticked off. I was like, dude, can we just get the loot boxes back, bro? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like that. And dude, like people were like, dude, you're a gear. How can you say that? And this was years ago. I'm like, dude, I, I am honest, okay? Like, when it ain't right, I'm going to call them out. And they did fix it, but it took way too long. Yeah. You know what I'm I saying? Can they they got to launch this right. Well. Yeah. I can explain a little bit onto that as well, because, you know, there was a lot of stuff like that in Gears 5 where it might have sounded good on paper and they thought they was doing the right thing, but it was either executed poorly or it just didn't, it didn't translate. 
Because like as you talk about with a tour of duty, because obviously I flew out to the coalition the week before Gears Fire dropped, and they told me that they thought the community was separated into like, you know, there's people that want to like spend money and, you know, get stuff like instantly. There's there's people that want to spend time and, you know, unlock stuff. And then there's people that just want stuff for free, you know? So they tried to like <laughs> cater to each different audience mm -hmm. and it kind of obviously just backfired, right? And then obviously it took, because I told him as well, I sat down with the game the week before it comes out and I went, why is there only Marcus Phoenix in, in multiplayer? There's, he's a, you, you've got one legacy character in multiplayer on launch day where where's dom where's carmine where, there's no delta squad there's no carmine there's no locust characters like marcus phoenix was the only legacy character on the launch of gears 5 so there was a lot of like you know missteps and misdirections so like you know if you obviously want to talk about uh release date for for gears of war e-day um there was a uh coalition developer leak on uh art station a little while ago from a senior character concept artist who had all of his projects that he's worked on and luckily, his last project was a unannounced coalition game set for 2026, mm -hmm. uh, which is obviously, you know, the 20th anniversary of Gears of War. And, you know, if we talk about how, because, um, you know, like I said, it's, it's very, very interesting for me as a Gears head, you know, Gears fan, you know, form through and obviously from, you know, super deep in the Gears community, knowing how a lot of Gears of War fans feel about the Gears games compared to how like Xbox gamers and Xbox fans feel about the Gears games. And obviously with Gears 4 and 5, at both of those launches, there was, you know, the campaigns were great, but there was a lot of... Um, issues and, and, and problems especially with multiplayer and stuff like that and servers and content and the games basically feeling like you know there's a foundation there but it's just it wasn't enough you know it was undercooked underbaked and so you know if they want to obviously make sure that like hey we want to get this next gears game gears of war e day like it has to be perfect flawless then because i you know ever since the announcement i've been bombarded with when's release day when's release day yo heard anything about yo, is it next year this year next year what's going on it's and definitely I've said, like, hey it's probably it's probably going to be 2026 and people are like, nah, nah, I can't wait that long. And I'm like, you know, if we obviously look at the history and you, we don't want to repeat ourselves with Gears of War and we want to make sure that when this game comes out, it's fully baked, it's fully ready to go. And uh, yeah, Gears of War is re-emerging, man. It's time.